This is Deborah Atkinson, and you're listening to Flipping 50, where I address your top questions and struggles. I share what to eat, how to move, and how to think to get the energy and the vitality you want in the second and better half. And I'm so glad you're joining me for this episode. It's really at your request that I have my guest here today because so very often I've been asked, who's the guy's version of Flipping 50? So this one is no surprise if you paid attention to the title before you opened up today. It is about men's hormone health. For your partner, your dad, sons, brothers, or friends, colleagues, you are most likely an influencer. I'm asked so very often, who's the guy's flipping 50? And it's because you influence most of the health behavior in your household. And he's watching and listening and relying on you. So this is for you, for him. He deserves, he serves other ages, but I want to give a warm welcome to my guest today, Dr. Tracy Gapin. As a board-certified urologist, men's health expert, speaker, and founder of Smart Men's Health in Sarasota, Florida. Thanks for being here, Dr. Gapin. Hey, Deborah. Thanks so much for having me today. Okay. Through your precision performance medicine program, you provide men a personalized path to optimize not just their testosterone levels, but overall health and vitality so they can become amazing husbands, fathers, and leaders. And you incorporate epigenetic coaching with data-driven biometric tracking, hormone optimization, peptide therapy, and cutting-edge age management protocols to help men optimize their health and performance. Let's unpack all of that for my listeners. <laughs> you got it. It's a lot. It's a lot, but it's such yeah. good stuff. And this word is not unfamiliar to them, but I want to dive into one of the things we mentioned is epigenetics. So let's just talk about that and unpack what are we really talking about there? Sure. Yeah. So epigenetics, as as your audience is probably a little bit aware of by now, it is really the science of how our environment, our lifestyle, our environment, um, and everything around us influences our genetic expression. And by that, it could be uh, it could be how you eat, uh, it could be when you eat, it could be how you sleep, it could be how you move, uh, it could be how you breathe, and it could even be how you think. And so every aspect of your life your, and your health affects your body's performance. And so I work with men uh, utilizing what's called epigenetic coaching, where we look at their personalized genetics and create a health plan that's specifically uh, designed for them. Very cool. Okay. So when it comes to women, you know, I can tell you what their top concerns are. I can probably get them <laughs> all the way to 10. But I don't know that I could do that for the guys. So what are men's biggest health concerns? Sure. I'll tell you what, the the most common issue that gets men to come see me is sex. So without question, you know, men think about sex all the time. They may not admit it to to the women, but it's really on their mind and, and it's first and foremost. Um, and so when, uh, when their sexual vitality, when their libido or sex drive is not like it was uh, years ago, or if their performance in the bedroom is not like it was years ago, that's often what gets their attention. Um, and so I'll see a lot of men who have been struggling with other issues that are very common, but they may not actually do anything about it until they start to have those, those sexual issues in the bedroom. And so it's funny how that will be what gets their attention. But they're dealing with low energy. You know, I, I, I like to call it a, an epidemic. It's a testosterone epidemic or a men's health crisis where I'm seeing men between age 40 and 70 who are dealing with dramatic drop in, in energy and fatigue and, and, you know, mental fog where they can't concentrate at work. Uh, I see men who are actually losing their jobs because they can't perform at a cognitive level like they could years ago. Um, and their health is kind of falling apart. You know, they get in the, the beer gut, the beer belly, and um, they don't know how to they don't know how to eat properly to lose the weight. They don't know how to put on muscle anymore, and um, they're having all these 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 health issues that are kind of coalescing at, at one time. But it's interesting that the sex is what finally gets their attention. <laughs> 
Well, it, it, okay. So this is really funny. So I don't think it would have surprised anybody that if we were talking about a teenage boy that they're thinking about sex all the time. Probably wouldn't surprise any of us that a, a 20 year old still thinks that way. But you're, you're telling me basically it never ends. It doesn't ever end, and it, and it should. Then you know, I guess, you know I think. yeah, it really yeah. It, it is. It, it's very simple, and, and it, you know, I'll have a lot of couples come in to see me, and and the wife will say, "Hey, doc, something's wrong," because he used to chase me around the house, and now suddenly I'm chasing him around the house, and something's wrong, and and that's often the first sign that there's a problem where there's a shift in the dynamics there, where the the wife notices that the man is not quite as persistent as they used to be. And, uh, and that's often a, a, an early warning sign that there's some problems. Wow. Okay. So if a listener is thinking, you know, why is my man lost his edge? You know, how do I handle that? What, what's your answer to that? First of all, I think it's tricky. Um, so let me know. I mean, is it tricky for a woman to initiate that, you know, I think you need to get some help, you know, how does she tackle that? Yeah, it, it, it's got to be tough for women because, uh, first of all, we are very stubborn. <laughs> men, men, men think that they know it all. Men are stubborn and um, they, they don't take a- advice very well from their spouse when it comes to that kind of stuff where they just kind of blow it off and think that, that they'll deal with it some other time. Uh, they're super busy with their careers. Um, they don't put much of a, of a priority or a focus on health, not nearly as much as women do. And, and so it, it takes uh, persistence. It takes the, the spouse really engaging with their partner and, and, and trying to, to shake some sense into them for them to you know, understand that this is a big deal. Um, it, you know, when a man's lost his edge, it's often uh, you know, apparent sexually, but it's so much more than that. You know, they're dealing with metabolic issues. They're dealing with, you know, not just, you know, a lot of guys think it's just testosterone and, and hey, can I just get a testosterone shot? But it's so much more than that. You know, it's, it's metabolism is looking at all the other hormones as well. They, they typically have um, issues with cortisol and chronic inflammation. Uh, they're typically sleeping very poorly and they're not eating well and their activity level has declined and, and all those pieces come together. And so to, to, to get a man to, to kind of take focus and start doing something about it, um, it, he has to want to do it. And so the, the nagging wife is not often going to be very effective at, at eliciting that change. So I, I think it's really a, a deep conversation. Sometimes the sexual part of it is what finally gets their attention. And so um, I, I, I think that that's a, a very effective way for women to reach, reach a man that, hey, you know, I... I, I want to be able to be intimate with you and, and this isn't, you know, something's not quite like it was. So maybe we should get some help with that. Um, and, and that's oftentimes the, the entry point to recognizing a lot of other health issues, whether it's, you know, insulin resistance or, you know, metabolic syndrome. Uh, these guys are, are often dealing with chronic inflammation that, that's unrecognized. And, and, and sexual issues are also an, an early indication of potential cardiovascular disease as well. So it's important that these guys really get checked out and, and, uh, you know, it's a warning flag that there may be some bigger problems. Interesting. So, and do you solely um, work with males, Tracy, or do you work with couples? Yeah, great question. My practice has, has really evolved into dealing with mostly men. Um, I, I do have some women in my practice. Um, in my, you know, I'm a, a, a full-time urologist still uh, in a busy clinical practice, and, and I see both men and women about 50%. Uh, uh, on either end. Um, but in my optimization practice and my, my uh, age management practice, I say it's mostly men. Um, and, and that just comes down to the fact that, that um, I, I know men, I know where they're coming from. Um, it, yeah, for 20 years of experience in men's health, it, it's my specialty. Um, but I certainly take care of women as well. Got it. Okay. So coming back maybe full circle to, to libido and to sex again, you know, for women, it has so much to do, I think, with mood, anxiety, stress, you know, and the way our monkey brains are thinking about 15 things in the, <laughs> the dirty dishes in the kitchen sink. At the same time, you know, somebody's trying to get 
romantic and <laughs> put on all the moves. I mean, how much does stress and anxiety come into play for guys? Great question. It, it's a big part of it, um, but not maybe in the same way as it is with women. With, with men, what happens is the, the the anxiety and the stress and the psychological issues that they're dealing with, um, it, it affects cortisol levels. You know, at, at a chronic level, these men are dealing with high cortisol and, and that stress is affecting their testosterone levels. It's affecting the quality of their sleep. And so they're, they're you know, chronically sleep deprived. Um, and so it, it's a little less of an emotional component for men as it is for women. Um, it's more of a physiologic dealing with multiple hormones. Um, it, you know, there's certainly some cognitive uh, aspect of, of the, the sex drive as well, but a lot of it is hormone driven. And, um, it, you know, I like to call it a systems based approach. And we have to look at not just testosterone, not just at the actual erection itself but the underlying physiology and that, that takes a systems based approach where we would treat the body as if it's a system with multiple moving parts. And, and uh, unless you deal with every aspect of it, you're going to fail. Very interesting. So in terms of cortisol, when you're talking about that, my mind went to with women, you know, almost hand in hand when we're talking about cortisol or talking about being under stress for long periods of time, which I'm describing like every day in America right now for all of us. But we also end up talking a little bit about adrenals and adrenal fatigue or, you know, HPA access, if you prefer that language. <laughs> Do we talk about that when we're talking about men's health as well? Absolutely. Yeah, you're absolutely right that that, that entire access comes into play and, and it you know, guys will come in and the first thing they ask, Hey, I think I might have low T and, and that starts the conversation and, and low testosterone certainly may be a part of it. Um, but you're right. There's the cortisol issue. There's the thyroid, there's the growth hormone, there's the, you know, estradiol issues. Um, you know, there's insulin sensitivity issues and all these come together. You're exactly right. So, um, you know, we have to look at all parts of it. So, a guy comes in saying, you know, I might have low T. So I'm just curious. I mean, is that as a result of act asking uh, Dr. Google or is that <laughs> men's health education or where's that coming from? <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. You know, it, it, it both, you know, guys will get advice from their buddies. Guys will get advice from the internet or Google, or they'll hear a commercial for, you know, a testosterone booster and, and, and that's all guys know is this concept of, of testosterone. And it's not helped by the fact that on every corner you find a testosterone clinic or they call it a quote men's health clinic, but, but make no mistake about it, it's purely a testosterone clinic. And so they come in thinking that that's the answer. And, it, it, you know, testosterone, what I like to say is that it, it, it definitely starts with testosterone, but it doesn't end there. Mm. And um, it's so much more than that. And so, um, I, you know, the testosterone is, is often the entry point where guys come in and, and, and that gets their attention. Um, but then we can really focus on, on their nutrition, you know, how much alcohol they're drinking, uh, what kind of foods are they eating, how much are they exercising, what's their stress level, how much are they sleeping, and, and, and do they know how much they're sleeping? You know, I, I'm big on, on using data, biometric tracking to actually understand the quality of their sleep um, as well. So talk so a bit. Talk a little bit about that when you say biometric tracking. How are you doing that? Sure. So the men who work with me, um, they all have a wearable device that they use on a regular basis. And what we can do with that is, is track um, data such as uh, their sleep. Um, so guys will tell you, yeah, I sleep just fine. Well, how long do you sleep? Well, I sleep five hours. Well, that's that's certainly never enough sleep. Five hours is never enough Um but let's say a guy is sleeping seven hours. What that doesn't tell you is the quality of that sleep. And without any kind of data to actually look at the quality of their sleep, and, and specifically I'm talking about deep sleep and REM sleep, um, it, without knowing that data, you really have an incomplete picture. And so uh, we track sleep. We track um, a very important physiologic biomarker called heart rate variability. And heart rate variability is really valuable to help us track physiologic stress and uh, recovery status. And it's, it's a great indicator of overall health uh, in the short term. And so we can track that on a daily basis and, um, and make sense of it. I'll, I'll give you a great example. I have a client who uh, has very low stress levels 
Um, but there are just a few days a week where we noticed that he was having uh, drops in his heart rate variability, which means high physiologic stress. And so we went through his lifestyle and we were working through what could it possibly be. And we're looking at his sleep. We're looking at his exercise. We're looking at his micronutrients and his nutrition and all these different things. And, and, I, and I could not really figure out what was causing these issues with heart rate variability until we finally realized that he was having date night with his wife on those nights <laughs> and he was, he was drinking. Those are the only nights he would actually go out drinking. And so I found that his heart rate variability was dramatically affected. His stress levels were dramatically increased on the days after he drank alcohol at night, the night before. Huh. And so we can use this data to really make informed decisions. And so I just actually saw that client earlier this afternoon, actually, it was his follow-up appointment. And um, he has not been drinking at all in the last six weeks or so. And it's amazing the difference. And, and so, it, you know, he'll, he'll have a drink here and there, but just the knowledge, just having that data to make, you know, to help you make empowered decisions is huge. Yeah. So yeah. Aiding compliance, right? Yeah. Having absolutely. that benchmark, setting some goals. Here's what I'm going to do, getting the feedback again and, yeah, when you know where you're running, it's a whole lot easier to run. <laughs> That's right. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I was going to come back to alcohol and you kind of kind of segued into it right here, but how important of a piece is that for men's health because you know, right now I think we've all I'm seeing this in the women that I work with whether it's in groups or privately. You know, between 45 and 70, we've kind of hit this thing where, you know, we've all begun to enjoy wine more than like 20 years ago. That's mm -hmm. a thing. And, you know, we drink a glass while we're getting ready for or preparing dinner and then another one during and after. And <laughs> so for women, that's kind of the way it is. Maybe it's wine for men. Maybe it's something else. But that seems to be a really tough one for women to wean from, I'm telling you. And uh, listeners, you know, I know you're out there. <laughs> so what is that for men, you know, how much does that come into play for, you know, like being the, the domino that knocks others over? It, 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 you're exactly right. It's, it's a massive problem. Um, it, it relates to you know, the alcohol effect alone is significant, but you also have to look at the actual caloric intake, the sugar intake with those alcoholic drinks as well. Uh, the inflammation that is causing uh, the disruption of sleep, you know, alcohol significantly uh, shortens your deep sleep. Um, it, it obviously causes inflammation. It suppresses testosterone production. I mean, there, I can list, you know, 10 different physiologic effects of alcohol. Um, and so th there's no question of the negative effects. Um, but, but you bring up a great point. How do you get someone to stop? How do you get someone to decrease intake? And I think a lot of it, what I have found is data. And so I've had a number of clients where I can, I can use, you know, specific lab data. I can use the biometric data from their wearable devices, for example. Um, I can use inflammatory biomarkers. I can look at their, you know, show them their body composition with a DEXA scan and I can show them the effects that it's having. And I, I find really that awareness is a big part of it. And, you know, it also comes back to their why, you know, you and I, uh, at our, one of our retreats, we did that passion test and I, I have all my men go through, through a passion test now so that we can really understand their why. And I focus, I focus heavily on each client. You know, what's your why? Why are you, why are you paying me to be here with you? You know, what, what, what's the purpose of it all? And, and that why should be the driving factor for why they think twice about how much alcohol they're drinking. And so I, I believe that that motivation has to come from within. And the only way to do that is to show them data so they can understand the problem. And then number two, focus on why they should change it, why, should, why they should overcome that problem. Yeah. You know, I just there's something here and I don't know what it is, but this magic pixie dust would probably help both. I think, you know, <laughs> yes. I mean, when you're swimming upstream and your, your partner is enjoying cocktails, you know, it's hard for you to stop, you know, especially if that's become a part of your socialization and your conditioning, mm -hmm. how you, mm -hmm. you know, enjoy your other friendships or couples or your girlfriend's night out or, or just a quiet dinner together. If it's become a habit, it's, you know, hard for one to give it up if the other one isn't. So, 
Yeah, yeah. Well, what I have found is effective, <laughs> this is kind of a fun little trick that, that your listeners can use, is order a club soda with lime. Mm. And so now you have a drink in your hand. Yeah. And to everyone else, it looks like a mixed drink. Right. Isn't, yeah. And to, to, you, to you, it almost tastes, almost feels like a mixed drink, but it's not. But at least it's something in your hand. It's non-alcoholic and you can socialize still. And it, uh, I, I think it's effective at kind of starting that reversal of, of um, you know, intake. Yeah. Love that. Yep. Don't go empty handed. <laughs> there right? you go. That's right. <laughs> exactly. And it's really is as much everybody else, right? It makes other people uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Okay, so That's right. Tracy, That's tell right. me more about like literally the logistics of how you work with men. You know, um, I know you're located in Sarasota, Florida, so you and I are both right. a little bit warmer than a lot of people in the northern climate right now. But <laughs> yeah, yes, absolutely. So do I have to so I- have a beach vacation to come work with you? Yeah. <laughs> Well, well. Uh, short answer is is yes and no. <laughs> okay, so um, I, what I do is, is I help men optimize their health and vitality. Obviously, I do that through various um, pieces of my precision performance medicine program. Um, it includes epigenetic coaching, where we take their uh, personal genetic blueprint and we create a customized plan for them, uh, looking at nutrition, looking at uh, detox pathways, looking at sleep looking at uh, genetics related to hormones as well as fitness and uh, micronutrients. And we use that data to create a a personalized plan. Um, It includes a a comprehensive lab panel, uh, looking at uh, biomarkers, uh, hormones, uh, lab uh, lipid panel, um, some inflammation markers, uh, sterile panel. And we put all this together with their genetics and with their goals and we create a personalized program for them and and every guy who's going to my program has a slightly different program a slightly different path to get to where they need to be and for some men that includes hormones other men is peptide which is a whole other fun area we haven't hit on Um, and there are a lot of other um, age management tools and protocols that we can use to help guys get their health back Uh, From a logistics standpoint, um, I do require that men come to see me physically in person uh, one time for the initial visit, and that enables me to actually use this little thing called my Florida medical license, which is (laughs) of importance. Um, But then the rest of the program is all done through telemedicine. Uh, We do it all through through video calls, and uh, we meet regularly, and I have a health coach who meets with them as well. And uh, we have a, a group program now that I've just la- recently launched as well for, for men who want to be part of a group. And there's uh, regular content and question and answer and, and more of an interactive component to that. And um, I, I have programs that run anywhere from six months to 12 months. Fantastic. So just uh, kind of backing me up. So I'm thinking about, all right, so if I'm signing somebody up to come and see you, um, do you order those labs and they have them done so that when they meet with you the first time, you're actually going over those or do you have to see them first before you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. What I typically will do is I'll, I'll get on a call. Any guy who's interested, I'll personally get on a call with him and, and, and talk about where he is now and what his goals are and where he wants to be. And, and assuming he's ready for the program, I'll then uh, get all of this testing started so that when he comes to see me here in, in Sarasota, we'll have everything kind of put together and be able to get things going. Nice. So you hit run running right away. Yeah. That's oh, awesome. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How important is exercise? And, you know, there is a right answer to this question, by the way. <laughs> there, there was a study that showed that, that six months of moderate exercise turned on over 7,000 genes in your body. I mean, that's epigenetics right there. We're talking about the third of your genome is turned on with moderate exercise. It is the secret to longevity. Um, I, I tell you, you will not find a healthy uh, a person in their 90s who is not still physically active. It is, it is massive. So what I do find is that uh, as men age, that strength training is actually much more important than cardio or aerobic exercise. Amen. Um, yeah, maintaining muscle mass, you know, avoiding sarcopenia, which is loss of muscle, is the absolute single most important thing for these guys as they're aging. And, uh, you know, that involves obviously fitness as well as making sure they're getting the right nutrition to go along with it as well as as long as long as well as making sure they're sleeping uh, uh, as well. Can we, touch so on, it, can we touch on that just a little bit? Sorry to interrupt. 
no, no, for no. a second. So let's <laughs> yeah. talk about, um, are we talking total calories and are we talking protein? Yeah, great question. So total calories are, are of minor importance. I don't want to minimize that, but it's really, you know, obviously 100 calories of broccoli is very different than 100 calories of Twinkie. And so calories are really not what's important. It's, it's macronutrients, it's micronutrients. And, you know, I look at genetics. And so what I mean by that is each man has a particular genetic blueprint that suggests whether they do well with a high carb or low carb diet, whether they do well with saturated fats or not, or whether they do well with a high protein, low protein diet, um, whether they're at risk for sensitivity to uh, dairy or uh, gluten or grains. Um, and so to answer your question, it's really individualized. And so I can give some general guidance in terms of, you know, focusing on a plant-based diet where most of your meals are is plants and, and meats, you know, if you're going to eat meats, it's more of a condiment. Um, you know, minimizing dairy intake, um, avoiding processed or refined sugars. Uh, that's probably the source of all evil in this world. <laughs> um, but beyond that, it's really in terms of how much protein, how much carbs and all that, I, I really focus on someone's genetics. And so um, there's no perfect diet. And uh, people will tell you, oh, you should do keto or paleo or whatever. And, and, and uh, you're just guessing. Without knowing your genetics, you're really just guessing. Great comment. Yeah, I'd love to do that. I'd actually love to do genetics and DNA testing with my women as well. And find yeah. is it's so helpful. And often it's not a first thing they do. It, it's a it's a latter thing because they want to dive right in. But it helps compliance when they're just mm -hmm. you know maybe not not following the recommendations that we've laid out once they've got that DNA and they've got proof I'm predisposed to do better when I do this it's just easier to do the right thing mm -hmm. yep exactly yeah and it comes back to data you know when you have data you can actually make very informed decisions and it makes those decisions fairly easy because you know, the information's right there in front of you. You're not just guessing. So. so good. And I'm so glad that there's finally really somebody, some direction to send <laughs> the guys, you know, in our families, in our lives, in our loves. So how can listeners connect with you? Where can they find more, Dr. Gapin? Sure. So you can go to my website. It's uh, smartmenshelp.com or uh, that's also drtracygapin.com. Uh, Smartman's Help is easier way to get there. And um, on the Work With Me page, there's a link where you can sign up to get on a call with me if you're interested in the program. And uh, we can take it further. Fantastic. Okay, that didn't escape me. It's gapping, not gaping. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> no, I'm used to it by now. I'm used to it. <laughs> you answered about anything, I do too. Just get a lot better. No worries. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> hey, hey, you work fine as well. Okay, so... Last question, hardest question of the day, potentially for some some of my guests. Is there a question that I should have asked you? Yeah, I I, I guess maybe the, the biggest question is, you know, what's the most important aspect of a man's health? And I, I, I would say that because I get that a lot, what's the most important thing that I should be focusing on? And, and that's really a trick question. And the answer is that, you know, there's not one piece and, um, you know, people out there are telling you it's all about testosterone, but that's a lie. It's so much more than that. And so again, I would emphasize that any man who is, who is going to a local testosterone clinic, you know, getting that shot every two weeks and paying 75 bucks and thinking that they're optimizing their health, that, you know, they're really kidding themselves and that you really have to look at the whole picture. You know, and uh, so of course at the very end, but I'm going to ask you this one more because this did strike me earlier. The words root cause, you know, we talk about so often everywhere. And that was the question I had is, is if somebody decides, well, I'm just going to take a shortcut. I know, I know where I can go get a testosterone shot. Could they be kind of hurting themselves or slowing down progress really in the end because they're not getting to the root cause of why they're having all those symptoms? Absolutely. You know, a, a testosterone shot is a Band-Aid. Um, you're not getting to the underlying etiology. And, um, it, you know, I could talk for an hour about endocrine disruptors and how toxins in our in our water supply and in our food and our personal care products are, are crushing testosterone. Um, but, but, yeah, just getting a, a testosterone shot alone, you, you're, you're really not fixing the problem. 
Um, it's a band aid, and you're only addressing one piece of it. And and I, when I give talks on this topic, I have a picture of a puzzle, and testosterone is that middle piece of the puzzle. But around it, I have cortisol and thyroid and inflammation and stress and sleep and nutrition and so on and so on. As as a point that that's just one little piece of it, and and if you're focused on just that, you're really wasting your time. Great answer, and I'm I'm really glad I did ask that. At the end. and <laughs> listeners, what about you? Do you have a question? Did we miss it? Leave it below the show link at flipping fifty dot com forward slash men. I love hearing from you, and I'm sure Dr. Gappin would as well. If this episode was helpful, please leave a rating in iTunes and then share it with a friend or your significant other, brother, father, son, you get the idea. Surround yourself with a supportive community of women on the same journey and potentially men. To get the most from this week's episode, again, check out today's show notes at flipping50.com forward slash men, where you'll find the juicy download, the way to get a hold of Dr. Gavin and just the resources that we mentioned on the show and a little um, contact. So a lot of you have asked, is there a transcript? And there practically is at every show notes. So what are you waiting for? Let's start flipping 50 together.